we're very fortunate to have four paintings by Peter Venning on this sale. And these two Cape studies are also fantastic to have because they show his excitement at being in the Cape. And the first painting called Malay Quarter with Sheep. It's an incredible work. It inspires me, a work produced probably between 1917 and 1920. And it, if you look at it closely, you'll see how much underpainting has been left in and rich, rich skeins of, of color and line overlaying the work. I just find it such a contemporary painting in terms of its mark making and, it, and its expressive quality. And, and the interesting thing about Venning was that he painted in plain air. He didn't work in studios very much. He painted out in nature. So all these works would have been inspired by what he saw, uh, the smells, the sounds, the sights. And interpreting all of these uh, strong stimuli through his experience, um, we have these paintings which serve as visual diaries, very richly painted. The Constantia Winelands, uh, by contrast, much more of a finished painting. The, the paint is overlaid fairly thickly, and we have his distinctive draftsmanship showing too in the, in the stalks of the vineyard in the foreground too. You always have that brittle, very fine, delicate line work. In these two other Venning paintings from the Tasso collection, starting with the Eating House, you have again Venning's great vitality of brushwork. Um, strong use of color, very, very distinctly unique color. Just when you think you've seen him employing a naturalistic palette, he starts working with almost a seemingly artificial uh, color, color choices. And this work, The Eating House, has this very, very contemporary feel in terms of how the figures are painted and how the space outside the eating house has been um, rendered. Then, of course, you can't have a, Venning, a group of Venning paintings without a still life work. And this one, typical to Venning's output, richly painted and mysteriously uh, described through the use of paint, uh, high life and shadow. Hugo Nordier is one of my favorite painters. He has an exceptional uh, sense of observation, color and line, uh, thick, delicious paint, but he, he didn't just become that person. It took a while. He studied first at the Slade School and then to the Munich Kunst Academy where he learned academic portraiture and figural painting. Following that, he moved on to the Barbizon School uh, at Fontainebleau and painted plain air with many of uh, France's avant-garde painters. Satyrs in a forest, dating from 1897, would, in my opinion, have come from that time, although in 1897 he was back in Worcester. This work bears the hallmarks of a romantic style painting, uh, mythologizing satyrs in a forest, uh, foraging presumably for mushrooms. Alongside this work, the wood carriers is of a different school. It's more of the realist school or the social realism um, of Millet and Corbet. And you can see how the, the labor of, of the workers has been monumentalized literally in terms of the proportions of the composition and giving a voice to those who were frequently unseen in society. Then of course, the the Neisner painting at the end, that this is a typical Nordia work. Lush use of paint, um, contrasting brush strokes and mixing the paint literally on the surface of the, of the work. And what comes across here is the um, exquisite uh, use of light and color. And it's a kind of, it's a painting that I want to escape inside of. It's, it's rich and mysterious and just so attractive and of course the size of it is pretty big by Nordia standards. Among Nordia's most popular subjects is undoubtedly Namaqualand and he traveled through Namaqualand in his modified Model T Ford 
um, painting and sketching scenes that he, he came into contact with. And under his masterful hand, he, he creates sense and recession out of richly colored fields um, through beautiful mark making and use of perspectival devices. So this work entitled Namaquiland, particularly strong work, have a close look at it, the detailing, uh, the fine brushwork and palette knife application is, is truly exquisite on this work and it, it, it illustrates the reason why the Namaquiland subjects are so popular.